This video shows you how to create a frequency table using Google Sheets from a set of data. Um, in this case, it's nominative or categorical data, um, favorite colors, red, yellow, green, or blue. Um, the technique we're about to show works similarly in other spreadsheets, but we're using Google Sheets as a demonstration. Uh, first of all, we have our data here. We have 40 responses from people as to what their favorite color is out of red, yellow, green, and blue. Uh, we've put it into a, an array for columns and 10 rows, but it works just the same way if it's in a single list. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this, we've got it all on one screen so we can see the data very easily. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to do is create our space for our frequency table. So we'll, we'll leave a gap in column E um, and we'll put our table here in columns F and G. So we'll start with our first heading, which is the color, and the second heading is the frequency. So these are our headings for our table. Uh, we'll make those bold. And I think we'll also, if I select the two columns, let's do that, um, set the two columns, I'll center those as well. Uh, and by double clicking here, I can automatically resize them. They're a little bit too, too narrow, I think, so I might make them a little bit wider. Okay, um, now we're going to put our four colors here. We'll put them in alphabetical order. Uh, we'll put them as blue, green, red, then yellow. Now it's really important that the text is exactly the same as it appears in the frequency table. So one way to make sure this is the case is just to click on one of the examples and use edit, copy, and go to the next cell and edit. Um, and I often use paste values only just in case there's any formatting behind it, which I don't want. So uh, but you can just do paste. Uh, and there we have blue. Now we'll repeat that for the other colors. Um, this time I'm going to use keyboard control. So uh, I'm using a PC, so it's control C and control V. Um, that's green and then red. If you were using a Mac, it would obviously be command C and command V. And we'll put yellow in there. Now, as I said, it's really important that these are spelled exactly the same way as they are in the table. That means that you must have upper and lower case matching um, and you mustn't have any empty spaces. So it must just say R-E-D for red, it can't be R-E-D and then a, um, a space bar. So there's an empty space. So we must be able to pick up exactly the same piece of text. Right, we want to know the frequency. Now there's a nice built-in function in spreadsheets that does this for you. So we'll click in the cell here where we want to record the frequency for blue and we start typing. So if we want one of the functions, the first thing we type is the equal sign that calls up the functions and our function starts with the word count and you can see with as we start to type the function name some suggestions come up the one we want is count if it says a conditional count across a range conditional being we're only going to count the number of times the word blue comes up so we'll click on that so you'll see it says range criterion so the range the range that is tested and that's all our data so we'll click and drag to select all our data, and you can see it's text says we've got A1 to D10. The next thing is that we want to search for the color, so we'll press comma, and then it says criterion. What are we looking for? And rather than type the word blue, the best thing to do is to just click in the table next to it where it's blue, and you'll see why that's useful in a moment. That's everything we need, so we'll close the formula with the closing parentheses and hit enter. And there we go, it tells us we have 15 records saying blue. Right, we need to copy this formula down. Now the quick way, we'll go back to there, is if we use the drag fill button here, this small blue square, so if we hover over it, we'll see that our cursor changes to a black cross, and we can click and drag, and it copies our formula down, so it's counted seven greens, 12 reds, and three yellows. Now we probably want to check that we've got them all, so we'll put a row at the bottom of our table, saying total, um, and then we'll go to this function here. This is the sum function, it's built in, uh, if we click on there, um, just click on the word sum, it's slightly off the screen, um, and then select our four uh, frequencies and press enter, and we expect the answer to be 40 because we've got 40 pieces of data. Ah, it's 37. So three pieces of data have been missed off. Why is that, and what are they? Okay, the way to do that is to fix that either, is to go back to our original formula. You'll see in our original formula, for blue, we were searching from A1 to D10, and it was searching what was in F2, which is blue here. This is cell F2. When we copied that formula down, see it's changed the F2 to F3, so we're now looking for green, but it's also changed the A1 to an A2 and the D10 
to D11. So it's no longer looking in the top row. Now that's not a problem because there weren't any greens in there. By the time we go down to red, it's now looking from A3 to D12. So it's not looking any of the top row. And there's a red one in there as well. So it's ignored that red. So that's the cause of the problem. How do we fix it? Well, when we type down original formula, there's a command that can stop those references from changing. If we go back into our formula, so we'll go back up to the formula bar at the top here, and in front of the 1, we'll type a dollar sign. And in front of the 10, we'll type a dollar sign. That dollar sign before the number 1 and before the number 10 means that those values won't change when we copy the formula. We could have put dollar signs in front of the A and D as well, which would stop those from changing. But as we're not going to drag the formula across other columns, they're not going to change anyway. But you can if you want to. Incidentally, on a PC, when you type this formula, you can hit the F4 button and it will automatically put dollar signs in place. And if you press it a few more times, it can change them so they're either just in place in front of the numbers or just in front of the letters or in front of both. OK, so we'll hit Enter and there's our 15 still. And now let's just drag that formula down. Uh, and you can see now we've got 13 reds and 5 yellows and our total is indeed 40. So we do have a correct total. So there's our frequency table based on our categorical data. Now that we have our frequency table, let's say we want to produce a bar chart. So to do that, we will click and drag to select our data. Notice that I've selected the headings as well, colour and frequency, but not the total. And then we can go to Insert, Chart, and Google will offer us some possible charts here. We'll just drag this back in so we can see it all. It will offer us some possible charts here. It's pretty good at deciding what we want. And indeed, the first chart is exactly the one we want. It has the frequencies of each colour up the side, and it has the names of the colours along the bottom. So for now, we can just insert that chart. And I'll just drag it across so that we can see it on the screen. So there's the, the chart in place. Um, and we're going to want to edit it. We might want to pick something, we might want to change these bars. So the blue bar is blue, the green is green, and so on. Um, we might want to play around with the axis, and we might certainly want to remove this legend. Um, but then we can do all that using customization. So if we click on here and we can go to Advanced Edit, and it takes us back to the previous screen, but we're on the Customizations tab at the moment now. And we've got a whole list of things we can uh, do about that. One thing is, for example, the legend. We have frequency there. We probably don't need that. So here where it says legend, um, we can remove that now, and that will give our graph a little bit more space. And then we're free to edit that. Uh, which will be the subject of a separate video. Okay, thank you for watching.